Good morning. Welcome to worship, another day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This morning, <clears throat> we are going to be continuing our, our series called To, and this morning, understanding God's call to follow. Last week, we looked at the call to listen to what God has uh, to say to us and let that sink into our hearts. And now we'll look at, uh, in our message uh, this morning, Vicar uh, Newman will expand on God's call to Elisha into a more public form of ministry but what God has called us from and what God has called us to will be at the center of our worship and our hymns and our, our praises of, of him and our scripture lessons, etc. We welcome all those that are visiting with us today. We're glad that you're here. Those that might be joining us online, welcome. You're certainly invited to print out a worship folder to follow along with today's service. May God be with us as we worship him this morning, as we gather in his name. We begin with our opening hymn, Blessed Jesus at Your Word. <laughs> Following the order of service of service of word and sacrament, if you wish to follow in your hymnal, starts on page 26. I invite the congregation to stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love 
and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil. Hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son to proclaim your kingdom and to teach with authority. Anoint us with the power of your Spirit that we too may bring good news to the afflicted, bind up the brokenhearted, and proclaim liberty to the captive. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first lesson this morning, the Old Testament lesson, also serve as the basis of our message this morning from 1 Kings chapter 19, beginning at verse 19, where Elijah, who is the prophet of the Lord, is given the direction to call Elisha to follow in the full-time work of the Lord. But here we see and understand that the following of the Lord, doing his work and title, entails a full commitment. Beginning at verse 19, So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the twelfth pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, and then I will come with you. Go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? So Elisha left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and became his attendant.
Our second lesson from the history of the New Testament church recorded for us in Acts chapter 13, where the Holy, Spirit's, the Holy Spirit directs God's people to set apart Paul and Silas to take the message of salvation to new parts of the world. The lesson from Acts 13. In the church at Antioch there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menean, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. The two of them, sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. John was with them as their helper. This is the word of the Lord. Out of respect for the gospel lesson, I invite you to stand. Our gospel lesson this morning recorded in Mark chapter 1 where Jesus calls two sets of brothers from their way of life to follow him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Let us pray. Lord God, last week we once again heard the call to listen to your word. We pray to you this morning that you would give us the strength and the focus to listen to your word and to follow what it teaches us. We pray this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to take out a Bible and to open to 1 Kings chapter 19, or at least to open up your worship folder to the first lesson that we will be studying today. And if you, want to, if you would like to follow along with the message notes, you can find them printed for you on the insert in the service folder. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, it's been a number of years since I saw the movie Forrest Gump. But as I was studying for today's lesson, a scene from that movie popped into my head. If you've seen the movie, you probably remember it. Forrest Gump is sitting in his rocking chair on his front porch when he decides for no particular reason he's going to go for a run. So he runs to the end of his driveway. He runs to the end of town, and he continues running to the end of the county. Then he thinks to himself, I made it this far. Might as well just keep running. So he continues to run. Eventually, he runs into an ocean, gets there and thinks, well, I've been running this long. Might as well just turn around and continue on running. He does this for three years, two months, and 14 days, runs back and forth from coast to coast. And during this time, many people are so inspired by what he's doing that they just drop everything and start running behind him. Do you think you could do that? Could you drop your life where it's at and just follow him? You may think, well, I can't run like that. I could never follow. But if you could, if you could run like Forrest Gump, could you just leave everything, your work, your family, and your life, and follow him? In our lesson from God's word this morning, we see a similar thing happening. The prophet Elijah comes to the field of Elisha as he is out plowing the soil. But Elijah, unlike Forrest Gump, does not just continue on his own way. No, Elisha comes into the field of Eli Elijah comes into the field of Elisha and throws his cloak over Elisha. And then he just continues on his way. Elisha understood what this meant. He went and he ran after Elijah. Not because he was inspired by what Elijah had just done, but he knew that he was being called to follow Elijah. Let's look at that a little bit more as we read from 1 Kings chapter 19, beginning at the 19th verse. So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the twelfth pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, and then I will come with you. Go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? So Elisha left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and become his attendant. This is the word of our God. Can you imagine what it would have been like to be Elisha that day? To wake up in the morning thinking this day would be like any other day put on your clothes and to go out to your field and to start plowing out in the field. But then a prophet comes. The prophet Elijah comes walking into your field and he throws his prophet's cloak over you. Now as we try and put ourselves into Elisha's spot, I think we probably have more questions that come to mind than answers. Did Elisha know who Elijah was? Had they ever had any contact before this day? We don't know. The scripture doesn't tell us of any, but maybe they did. But what we do know is what Elisha did. Elisha knew that he was being called to follow. So he dropped everything he was doing. He left his plow sitting there in the field, and he ran after Elijah. He was called to follow. Yet you and I may ask, what is included in that call to follow? Well, first of all, we see this morning how the call to follow includes being called from something. 
Elisha was called from his plow. He was called from his ordinary, everyday work. He was a farmer, and a rather wealthy farmer at that. For we are told how he was out in his field plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. He had 24 oxen in his field, and most likely 12 plows that they were pulling, of which he was plowing with the 12. And yet he left that. He ran after Elijah. It's also a call from your family. For Elisha, the call meant that he had to leave his family behind, that he would follow Elijah and never know if he would ever return, never know if he would ever have the opportunity to see his family again. And Elisha understood that. We see that from his reaction. For Elisha goes home. He takes his oxen and he slaughters them. And he uses the wood from the plow to create a fire. He cooks the meat and he throws a party to celebrate with his family for one last time. You may be thinking, I could never do what Elisha did. I could never just up and leave my family, leave my job, leave everything I've known to be my life. Yet this morning, we're not just looking at what Elisha was called from, but we also are reminded how each and every one of us sitting here this morning have the call to follow. We have been called from something. First Peter tells us how we are called from our former way of life. Look at the words. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Our call to follow includes a call from includes a call that we are called out of darkness. What does that mean? It's not that we just go to the back of the room and flip on a light switch so that we are out of darkness. No, the scriptures use darkness to picture us in our sin, to picture the sin and evil that encompassed our life. Before we were called to faith, before we were called from that darkness, that is all we had. Darkness, that sin and evil in our lives. But yet when you were called to faith, you were called to leave that behind. To leave behind your former way of sin. You were called from selfishness and a focus on yourself. You were called from focusing on yourself, on your deeds, your actions, your abilities, your ideas. Those are many things that you have been called from in this life. The call to faith includes those. Yet why is it so hard to leave behind these things? Why is it so hard to leave behind our life of sin? Is it that it's just more comfortable? It's easier? It's what the world is doing all around us, so it's just natural for us to do that. Maybe is it because when we're mixed in with people who are living in those lives of sin, it's so much easier for for us to cover up our sin. When we're in the darkness, it's easy to say, well, I know mine was wrong, but it doesn't look so bad compared to what they did. So why would we ever want to leave the darkness? Why would we ever want to leave that former way of life when in that way of life we could possibly make more money, have a more attractive lifestyle by the way the world looks at it? Think about what happens if you are not called from darkness. If you do not leave that way, if you do not leave the ways of this world, what happens when all your money is gone? What happens when your ideas fail you? When all you have left in your life is despair? If you have not been called out of darkness, if you have not been called to faith in God, what do you have left? There's nothing left in your life if you do not have the Lord in it. We truly do need help, eternal help. But give thanks to God. He has given us that help. He has called us from that darkness. He has called us from focusing on ourselves, to focus on him and on all the wonderful things he has done for us. And when we are called from focusing on ourselves, we are freed from that guilt that comes from the things that we do. Take as an example all those high-up executives that we've been hearing about in the news lately who did whatever it took to increase their way of life, to make their way of life the most attractive for them and their family, not thinking about anyone or anything else. 
And yet now we see them suffering the consequences for their actions. And as we look at their lives, they're not really that attractive of lifestyle anymore, is it? Without the Lord, no matter what we get on this earth, it cannot compare. It, can, it cannot bring us hope, peace, and joy. But when we are called out of darkness, when we are called from focusing on ourselves, and when we focus on our Savior, that's where true joy comes from. That's where the true peace comes from. We don't need to worry about what happens in our lives, whether we keep our job or lose it, whether we have a high income or a low income. For you know, God has taken care of our greatest needs. He has given us forgiveness. He has given us salvation. So when God has taken care of our greatest needs, how much more so can we trust him to take care of those earthly needs, our physical lives, daily bread? We have been called to follow. Find peace and joy in that, that we have been called to follow the most amazing God. We may not have the same call as Elisha did, We may not be called from our family. We may not be called from our job. But we do have a call from something. And also, as Elisha, we also have a call to something. Elisha was called to follow Elijah. He was called to become Elijah's attendant. In a way, you could say that Elisha was called to become Elijah's vicar. He was called to train for the full-time public ministry. He was being called and trained for that time when God would call Elijah out of this world and when Elisha would take over that ministry. Our call that we have received, it may not be a call to full-time public ministry. Maybe there are some here this morning who have that desire, who want to spend the next few years of their life training and preparing to Share God's message full-time in the work of the church. That's great. But I would venture to guess that most people here this morning will never pursue that calling. But yet we all have a call to something. Even if we aren't called to full-time ministry, we have received the call. We have been called to faith. Look again at those words that we just read in 1 Peter. After we are told how we are called out of darkness, We are told how we are called into his wonderful light. And then verse 10 goes on to explain that more for us. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Yes, we truly have received mercy. We have been called to faith in our Savior. We've been called to also proclaim that message. It may not be that we get up in front of a crowd on a weekly, daily basis to share our faith. It may not be that we ever get in front of a big crowd to do that. But we are still called to proclaim our faith. And sometimes that's not even by using words. Sometimes it's by our words and actions. Listen to what Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 5. Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Our lives, our words and actions are to always share and proclaim our Christian faith. Now maybe the question that each of us needs to personally ask ourselves is, do people know that I'm a Christian? Do my friends and family know what I believe in? Do my neighbors know where I go on Sunday morning and why that's so important to me? I think maybe the question I need to ask myself the most often is, Does that person in the checkout line at the grocery store or just those casual acquaintances know that I'm a Christian? Those times when I'm just tired, when I'm worn out and sick of standing in long lines, is my Christian faith evidenced by my words and actions? If you answer no to any of these questions, let me ask you, why not? Is it just more comfortable to fit in with the ways of this world? Is it just easier to act like everyone else does out in our world and not let our light shine? Be reminded of Jesus' words again. In John chapter 15, he tells us, I am the vine, you are the branches. 
If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Our call to faith is not to just to have our faith hidden somewhere deep inside our hearts and lives. It's a call, our call to faith is a call to wear our faith as a badge of honor, to let our light shine in the darkness, to let our faith be known. And when God does give us the opportunity that we are always prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you for the reason, for the hope that you have, yet why would we do this? Maybe we should ask, why, why wouldn't we do this? We have been called to the most glorious life ever, serving and proclaiming the most glorious God ever, a God who sent his own son into this world to die on the cross for you and for me, a God who did everything in his power to bring you and me to himself, to bring us to faith, to share that wonderful knowledge, that peace with us, that we might be with him one day forever in heaven. Why wouldn't we want to share our faith? There are truly blessings that come to us when we do share our faith, when we let our Christian faith encompass our whole lives, when our Christian faith is at the center of all we do. We are constantly in God's word. We are spending time studying it, and we are letting that guide our words and actions. And what a blessing that is to have God's word daily before us, for it is God's word that brought you to faith. And it's that same word of God that strengthens you daily in your faith and gives you the confidence to share that with others and to work for God's glory. And when you're doing all this, it's just natural that joy and peace will come. Not just the peace that the world gives, but the peace of God, which surpasses our understanding, the peace which encompasses our hearts and flows out in our lives to others. Now, you may never be called to full-time public ministry like Elisha was, but each and every one of us have received the call to follow. We have been called out of darkness. We have been called into his wonderful light. We have been called to faith. And having received that call to faith, certain things just naturally follow the call to serve, and the joy that comes in serving other people with God's word. The call to grow in our Christian faith, to come to church regularly, to daily be in Bible study on our own so that we may, be, that we may have God's word forever in our hearts, strengthening us and creating that joy within us. And then also the call to proclaim that to others. In your words, and also in your actions, as your life always shows your Christian faith. May we always find our joy and our peace in following our Savior, in listening to his word. May that be our joy as we leave these doors today, that we had another opportunity to hear God's word, another opportunity to be strengthened in our faith, and let our lights shine as we go out into this world. Amen. Now the peace of God who has called you to faith will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. This point in our service, let, let us confess our faith using the statement of belief that you find on page 7 in the worship folder, the Nicene Creed. We rise.
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. us this morning. Those that are visiting online, we invite you to sign our online guest book. We'll be gathering our offerings, which uh, share this message and call people to follow, call people out of darkness to the wonderful light. And following the uh, prayer of the church, we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper. And there's an announcement about our practice of the Lord's Supper on page 9 of your worship folder. If you're visiting today, I invite you to read that and to speak with me after the service before joining us at the Lord's table. Those that will be communing with us, you might be encouraged to take out Christian worship and turn to page 156. There are questions that you might use to prepare yourself to receive the sacrament. Use the responsive prayer printed on page 8 of your worship folder. I invite you to stand. <clears throat> Gracious God and Father, we praise you for the countless blessings which we receive from your hand, the beauties of creation and the bounties of the earth, the joy of life and the pleasure of friendship, the good work and the gift of rest, the privilege to share happiness and sorrow with one another, Above all, we praise and thank you for your saving word and for your son's body and blood, which you give to us to, us to eat and drink in the sacrament. Through these means of grace, you send the Holy Spirit into our hearts and unite us to Jesus and to the whole Christian church on earth. Strengthen us through this heavenly food. Increase our trust in Christ and our love for one another. Great God and Lord, without your continuing help, we easily waver in our faith, lose courage, and grow careless in our watchfulness. The times and days are perilous. Give us strength to face the evils of each day with fresh confidence. Open our lips to speak of your grace and move us to use the gifts that you give us to share your word of salvation with all people. Protect and prosper the family, the school, the government, and all good institutions that, have been, have it, that you have established for the benefit of society. Remember in mercy those who are sick and suffering, and bring your healing to troubled homes and lives. Move us to pray for those in need, and to help them with deeds of kindness. Hear us, Lord, as we silently bring you our private petitions.
now eternal God and Father, keep us in the saving faith and so enable us to overcome all things through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. In the past, he spoke to us through the prophets, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, who is the radiance of his glory. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
In response to the blessing of his word and his sacrament, we join our hearts in the song of thanks. Thank the Lord. Please stand.
You may be seated. Again, certainly always a pleasure and privilege to join with you in worship, be encouraged in our faith and our following of the Lord Jesus. May his word empower us to follow him more closely this week. You have the week's schedule uh, here at Tree of Life and the, the insert. Certainly uh, take note of those uh, opportunities you're involved in. Always an invitation to the Bible study opportunities, the men's group at Monday night at uh, Rudino's, Wings in the Word, uh, Wednesday morning with the ladies' Bible study here at church. Next Saturday morning, opportunity to be involved in our Easter uh, outreach planning, um, breakfast provided. New, new attendees are always welcome there as well. Next Sunday, we'll have our quarterly congregational meeting, just a communication piece of our congregation to keep everybody updated in the loop and what's, uh, what's happening and opportunity to give your feedback as well. <clears throat> Along the uh, communication line, uh, the schedule for uh, member visits is uh, on the refreshment table again. If you haven't scheduled yours, I ask that you would help me by doing that so I don't have to... Uh, track you down or send my people after you. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> um, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for, uh, for me just to be in connection with you and what's going on in your spiritual walk and other things and, and uh, have really enjoyed the visits we've had. And It's not a you're in trouble visit, but just a, a way to uh, encourage you in your faith and to, uh, for you to sh- uh, share with me what's, what's on your heart and mind as well. So um, I've had another week of scheduling opportunities, so uh, please take note of that before you leave this morning. Um, a couple logistic things. Uh, maybe this Sunday you, you, we don't see it as much a need, but the last few, as we get about 100 in worship, which the last three Sundays we had over 100, the uh, parking lot fills and the seats fill. Uh, so a couple logistical things. We do have uh, some access to parking across the street. Uh, it was funny this morning, a few people pulled in like, do we have church today? Because <laughs> uh, some had already uh, recognized that need and parked across the way. Another opportunity is just to, instead of taking these spots here first, if you're able-bodied, some park close to the door if you need that access, but just drive around and maybe if we fill up our parking lot from the back around to the front, those that come uh, later. Uh, just there's There's been a, a couple comments to me that someone has driven through just looking for a parking spot. And that's a, that's a happy problem. Those, these are not uh, bad things to have happen. So we're, we're glad for the opportunity. And, and if you're in the mood for a few extra steps and a, a walk through the nice front part of our garden, uh, you can park through uh, across the street. Um, and if you see about... Thank you. 
needs to be spoken. God bless your day.